I think part of this new breed of tech is is that really we're functioning more as like less as wrenches for hire and more as um, very well connected experienced consultants who have technical solutions. This episode is proudly brought to you by Mapper Forwards Workshop. It's time to become a coffee consultant. Learn how to diversify your revenue streams and create freedom from your day job while saying goodbye to that alarm clock forever by becoming a consultant within the coffee industry or directly to consumers who have shifted towards home brewing and home roasting. Protect your income from challenging times in the coffee value chain by taking this course today. Go to mapperforward.coffee forward slash workshops or click the link in the show notes for details. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapa Forward Friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is episode one of a brand new five-part series. Joining me in this series is Spencer Perez. Spencer, welcome to the podcast for the very first time. Thanks for having me. Stoked to be here. It is great to have you here. We are doing something a little different this time. This is the first time we've had an espresso tech on the podcast. And uh, I feel like this is a long time coming and I am sort of a little bit, tiny bit in the dark in what we're going to be talking about. And I'm a little excited about that. Uh, uh, folks, to let you know, we, are, we do have the whole series planned out. We know what we're talking about, but the theme is going to let you know a little bit more about why I'm saying I'm a little bit in the dark. Now, the theme is there's something interesting going on with espresso techs around the world. And Spencer, you are a part of a uh, an espresso tech online Discord channel. Is that correct? Yes. What's it called? It's called Service Layer. Okay. Service Layer. Um, Service Layer. Tell us about what you guys like t- tell us about service layer sure um in in short um it is a uh an independent decentralized affinity group maybe is the best way to put it what's uh, an affinity group yeah we love each other we love coffee and we're all sort of pushing for some of the same uh ethics and values and modes of work We're looking to elevate the trade, create, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe some resources for technicians um, that historically haven't existed, advocate for the trade. um, And generally work together to try to create more uh, sustainable pathways uh, to becoming a technician Mm -hmm. and to thriving as a technician. Now, this conversation has been a few months in the making because when I started talking about the golden espresso machine on social media and espresso techs were contacting me from all over the world and shout out to my favorite espresso tech, Madeline. Uh, from <laughs> Love Madeline. Madeline. <laughs> Everyone loves Madeline. She's amazing. Um, Madeline's been on the podcast before. Everybody knows Madeline. But Madeline was like, we really need the voice of espresso techs. I said, yeah, I'm hearing from a lot of espresso techs that really have a lot of opinions about what's going on. And I started to realize like there's something – you guys are kind of like in the background of everything. So through this series, folks, we're going to be talking about, here's the direction that the whole series is going to go. So we're going to talk about what espresso techs traditionally do, and then we're going to look at why espresso techs are invisible in our industry, because they are for some weird reason, but yet the moment we need them, like we desperately need them. Uh, and we don't know where to find them, Uh, then what's the relationship between techs and manufacturers? Then what insights can espresso techs give us into the current coffee crisis? And then we're going to finish off this series with a cultural change for espresso technicians. Now, before we dive into the conversation, I would like to invite everybody if you love what we do on this podcast, please consider supporting the podcast in whatever way you can if 
the best way that you can support this podcast is by sharing it with people, please. We would love it if you would do that. And if you would like to support the podcast financially because we have committed to not putting sponsors on the podcast so that they don't control the content, join our Patreon or join our Become a Paid Member on YouTube. That would be a great help for some of the projects that we've got coming up that are going to be very exciting uh, that we're going to be announcing very soon. So that money that you contribute helps fund the projects that we're going to be bringing for the industry. Yeah, we will tell you more about that very soon. So Spencer, tell us. Thank you for that endorsement. So I really appreciate it. I hope everybody in your service layer group also jumps on that as well so now what does in this episode we're going to be talking about what does an espresso tech traditionally do tell us so what does an espresso tech traditionally do okay so <clears throat> espresso techs and i don't mean this in like a social justice kind of way but like <laughs> we're not a monolith different techs do different things but Typically, it falls inside of the envelope of, uh, at a very practical level, espresso technicians sell, install, uh, maintain, repair specialty coffee equipment. Um, That's sort of like the broad envelope that we work inside of. Uh, Wait, I've got to stop you there. Why did you specify specialty coffee equipment? Oh, good question. Um, well, I suppose there's plenty of techs who who work on stuff outside of specialty coffee equipment. Yeah, I'm so used to being in the mode of the specialty of scene, living in that world. Yeah. Um, but yeah, people run the gamut from you know one person operations mm-hmm. uh, that are like you know very very choosy in terms of who they take on as clients, and on the far other end of the spectrum, you have 70 person multi-state organizations yeah. who do contract work for Bunserve and mm-hmm. hit all the, you know, do convenience store work and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So all of those are coffee technicians. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's a new breed of coffee technician oh, that has tell. a background in specialty coffee and is mm-hmm. trying to bring that to the technical service facet mm-hmm. of the industry okay. um so maybe that's where we make the distinction in uh, in terms of a specialty mm-hmm. coffee tech um but it runs the gamut so we're the ones who take care of your equipment and different techs do that to varying degrees mm-hmm. um i think part of this new breed of tech is is that really we're functioning more as like less as wrenches for hire and more as um, very well-connected experienced consultants who have technical solutions. Um, And, and that's, that's how personally I like to operate. Um, My favorite clients are the ones who really lean on us for consultation. Um, But we're, you know, when, when we sell a machine, We are bench testing the machine at our shops before it comes to you, getting it dialed in and tuned before it comes to you to make sure that you're getting something you're going to, it's going to perform for you um, from day one. Mm -hmm. We navigate warranty claims. Um, Yeah. And then, and then we're like, we're there when something breaks, but you know, hopefully we're, we're, working on like pretty deep maintenance programs with people so that the um, instances of failures are few and far between for well-maintained equipment. Yeah. What's the path to becoming an espresso tech? Um, pick up a wrench and go tell people you work on espresso machines. I mean, it's like... <laughs> it just sounds, the, sounds like the rest of coffee. <laughs> There, right. Yeah, there there aren't there aren't really developed pathways to to training confident competent technicians. A lot of us come. I I can tell you my pathway was that I grew up working on cars with my dad. I worked in a roastery, and 
uh, volunteered to work on the rooster, mm -hmm. um, cleaning it, repairing it. I figured that out as I was going. Um, and then at uh, the rooster that I owned for a little bit, there was no one that was here in Chattanooga. There was no one working on coffee equipment. And so when something broke, I was the one who was like, I guess I'll try to figure it out. And then I realized that all of the coffee companies in Chattanooga were having the same problem. And I, as an owner, didn't have time to take care of the equipment really mm -hmm. well. And and so I was like, I think I'm the one who's best suited in town to do this work full time. And so I just decided I, I had gotten into motorcycles, like working on old dumpy bikes. Mm -hmm. So I just brought all that to this and was like, I'm I know coffee. I, I know how to work on stuff. There are training opportunities um, in the way of of manufacturer certifications. They're typically pretty rudimentary. Mm hmm. Um, so it's good. Like if you're starting, if you're like wet behind the ears, those are great. You get familiarity with the equipment. You get an idea of some common failure modes, how to do um, what the manufacturer says, uh, needs to be done for plans maintenance. But beyond that, we're really hurting for advanced technician development and most technicians like the Venn diagram of interests and skills for technicians is mm -hmm. very close to a circle. Right. So like <laughs> it, it attracts a lot of very similar personalities. Um, most of us are not especially like uh, financially savvy. We're not really business strategists. We tend to be pretty good at fixing stuff and understanding how systems function. And, 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 and a lot of us have really deep customer service experience. And those are some of the skills that we really bring to the table. But a lot of us are, are um, not all of us by any stretch, but I am lacking in the sort of like uh, financial business strategy side of things, you know? Right. Um, so anyway, this is a really long winded answer, but uh, the path. So like uh, the SCA, you know, helped get the Coffee Technicians Guild off the ground a few years ago. Mm -hmm. I was a member for a couple of years. Um, there was a blog. The people who <laughs> were actually blog. doing, <laughs> yeah, That's I don't, fantastic. I don't want to, I don't want to denigrate the work that they like. The people who were who were actually doing the work <laughs> wanted to do a lot more than I think they were really able to do. That was so with, fucking great. <laughs> with what got greenlit by the SCA. And that's disappointing. You know, the SCA as sort of like um, the marquee organization for specialty coffee in the United States. Uh, it's supposed to be global, you know, bro. It, it's not just supposed to be yeah. in the United States. So, so it's a pretty like hollow in terms of like real value, pretty hollow. And, and mm. so there's some amazing people involved with the Coffee Technicians Guild who have gone on to create their own schools basically so um you know just like can i shout somebody out of course uh yeah brady butler um has trailblaze coffee and that's a tech school and he's <laughs> working on building that out and that so he started this private i would i would not hesitate to send a trainee technician to brady's okay. school again it's not going to teach you like at the end of the day experience is what teaches you best as a technician mm -hmm. so so yes we can learn a lot of theory we had an awesome opportunity um in chicago uh at the expo to learn from um a guy named pat boyt who mm -hmm. does aftermarket burrs he's a genius um when it comes to electronics and theory and so we had like a really focused uh technician advanced um technician course on mm -hmm. electrical theory with Pat Boyd. So, so there's like, it's very grassroots. There are not clear cut pathways. And, and there's a lot of technicians who are members of the service layer who want to help create those pathways, I think. And, and so that's something that we're talking about a lot is like, how do we create how do we make it easier to become a good coffee tech? Because you can go pick up a wrench and go start working on people's equipment, but you got to be really careful. You can do a lot more harm than good 
um, if you don't have the sensitivity to to take care of your customers and know when you're in over your head. Yeah, because it sounds like a problem, no? That you can just pick up a wrench and call yourself a yeah, service yeah. technician. Like, I, it's I totally definitely see some problems. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's the other thing we need is like, is like independent, like, like a real certification, like a real in, in the same way that mechanics have like the ASE certification, mm -hmm. like not a, like a, an electrician, a thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. Like, a, like with like real legal, like a legally defensible, serious mm -hmm. certification for, for technicians. We really need that. Yeah. Um, I think. I think that would be uh, not only would it is it necessary, but I think that that would bring a lot more people into the profession. Um, the The reason that we wanted to have this conversation is uh, not just because we wanted to say, "Oh, hey, look what espresso technicians do." Um, there, from what I understand, you guys have insight into this industry in a way that most of us don't. You guys are kind of the person in the room that everybody forgets that's in the room. So they start doing shit and talking about shit and et cetera, et cetera, that they, because they don't remember that you're there, uh, they perhaps act in a way that they perhaps shouldn't. So in the next episode, we're going to start deep diving into Perhaps the reason that you wanted to come on the podcast, which I really, uh, I still am trying. You wouldn't tell me beforehand, which is fantastic. All the the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do that in the next episode. Uh, so join us, folks. Peace, love, and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. I really hope you enjoyed this episode, friends. Please don't forget to show us some love by subscribing, liking, commenting, and most of all, sharing this podcast with your friends. Check the show notes for links, including our sponsors and our Patreon. And stay tuned for more great conversations on the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward.